Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome back. We're now going to take a look at revolutionizing the digital e-commerce market with none other than Noon's CEO, who is in fact here with us in person today. And he is now here to talk about fighting off global giants and regional competition, and also doing it differently in the crowded e-commerce space. So I'd now like you all to give him a very warm welcome. It's a great pleasure to welcome to the stage, who is here with us today, Faraz Khalid, the CEO of Noon. How are you doing? It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Really wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your, uh, of your very busy schedule, I can imagine. No microphone is working, sadly. Let's m get someone up here on the stage and get that fixed ASAP. Oh, here we go. There's a handheld. Perfect. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we right. go. Cool. No, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege, and uh, great to welcome everyone to Dubai as well. Well, Khaled, where do we start? Uh, perhaps by saying that you, you've done things very differently. And we've been reading as well that you know, you've launched several e-commerce uh, companies and ventures very successfully, in fact. So where, where exactly has this passion come from? Let's start with that. Well, um, so two, right? Uh, I started Namshi here and, and now Noon. Um, but really, a, a lot of it comes from um, growing up in Delhi in the 90s, right? Um, the, uh, internet was a luxury. So a bunch of us, I think, um, I see the class that graduated between 2000 and 2003 from high school. Uh, we had to really scavenge for internet. So we'd, um, we'd rig up, dial up connections, share passwords, find a way to get to the internet, right? And the best you'd get is the 56K, like super slow dial up connection. Um, but there was this like, deep burning desire, I feel like, at the time in, in, in sort of my cohort in, in, uh, in Delhi, in India, in our schools, where you wanted to uh, get on this sort of consumer internet sort of space. You know, if, if someone asked me at 18, what do I do, with, what do I want to do with my life? I, I just very sort of, uh, you know, I would very clearly say I want to run a large consumer internet company. And... Um, uh, I went to engineering school and then uh, went to the U.S. for, my, for my, my business school. In 2012, I moved here, and um, consumer internet was still in its sort of like somewhat infancy. There was one very large e-commerce company here, uh, a marketplace called Souk. And um, but yeah, we started small. We we um, built. We started building what um, was a fashion e-commerce company called Namshi, and. Um, um, yeah, started with shoes, went into clothes, and then um, one thing led to, to another. And then um, by 2017, the company was quite large, was the largest sort of fashion e-commerce company in, in, in the region. And uh, we got acquired by Emar Malls Group. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then noon happened. And we still believe that this is the beginning of the beginning. We really haven't really started. You know, if you look at e-commerce penetration in our part of the world, it's 4 or 5%. Um, compare that with um, South Korea, which is now at 40%, China, which probably is north of 35% now, there's at least like 10x to median, and those com countries will also continue growing e-commerce penetration. So if you were to ask me, this is the very start of something massive, and, and whatever I've done in my sort of like, um, sort of uh, career here in Dubai, um, I feel like these are the early rounds of... Um, what should be a very, um, what, what frankly is a revolution in retail, right? And we're so lucky and, and so grateful um, to have a role to play in this sort of space. Um, so yeah, fascinating. It really is a revolution and amazing to have such clarity at such a young age of what you wanted to do and that sort of vision. And also, you know, you've mentioned two very big names there as well with Namshi and Souk and now Noon. So, I mean, I... I didn't build Souk. We were competing with Souk. I competed with Souk. No, so I, I, um, I mean, I've been in Dubai for 11 years now and I've seen the growth of Noon. I mean, it's just sprung up. It's blossomed uh, so wonderfully and it's been amazing to, to watch as well. So... Tell us about that, you know, how that sort of journey started and also what do you think is the central innovation to that success then? Look, I think um, we really think this is a generational opportunity. Uh, like I said, it's, 
uh, the, the space we operate in, um, e-commerce, uh, retail, um, is going through this massive revolution. And um, I mean, I can't believe it. Noon is, we just, yeah, two days ago were, was our fourth year anniversary. So it's still a very young company. Uh, looking back, like most people think it's a lot older than it is. Uh, most of the team only came together five years ago. And um, uh, in any sort of large generational company, we feel like uh, you know, the first five years, the first decade is, is just foundation building. So we're building the platform. Um, the way we think about the mission is very different. And I, I, I want to sort of address this. Um, um, this the central sort of driving force in this is uh, we've been able to attract a phenomenal group of people who believe that the future will be very different from the present. We are taking a long-term view of life, really building for the long term. And it's the chemistry with which these super high quality people come together on this mission, dream, time travel, um, sort of execute their skills, yes, but also um, show the passion and the courage to actually shoot in the dark a bit, right? And I, now it seems sort of like somewhat real, but like four years ago, it was not clear that, you know, Amazon had just acquired a company here. How do you wake up in the morning and, 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 and go battle with the scariest company in the history of capitalism, right? Um, and we've got this incredible group of people who, who believe that they have a shot, that they deserve a shot, that a company born here can actually fight. And um, it's sort of this very warm, fuzzy, uh, mission-oriented sort of gang of uh, insurgents that, that I have the pleasure of working with. I think that really is the central motivation and sort of we've been blessed with um, incredible um, um, investors. Um, Mr. Mohammed al Abar, who's uh, I frankly think is the Steve Jobs of the Middle East, like, you know, uh, look at his life and the way he, he thinks about the world and the impact he's had. Um, he's the founder of the company and um, to be led by him, work around him and also our investors. So, you know, the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, the Sovereign Wealth Fund there is, is, is uh, one of our investors. So we really, we've been blessed with incredible support, uh, a grand mission, and a phenomenal team that, that, that goes to bat every day. And I think, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a very unique mix. And, and, and we, we really believe that, you know, fast forward a few years, we really think that this, this is an important company working on a, on a, uh, a mission that is um, beyond the commercial goals we've set for ourselves. So um, a lot of it is we take so much pride in, in the fact that, you know, there is an app on which millions of people from, from here and in the region come to look for things, and they, they choose us over, like, the, the, the choices they have. And um, we're proud of that. It's, it's, it keeps you going. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry for the long-winded answer, but... I don't think I answered it, but no, it's incredible. And also to, to think that it's only four years old. Yeah. I mean, even myself, I thought it was a lot older because its, it's presence is, is, is phenomenal. And as you said, Mohammed Alaba is this in, incredible individual as well, a great leader in business. Uh, tell us a little bit more about, I mean, this space is super crowded. So how on earth have you managed to sort of rise above that competition? Uh, look, honestly, we still think that there, we, there's a lot of things we're embarrassed by, so we're going to fix those things. But um, um, e-commerce is still quite small, and we really believe that if you're willing to give great service, if you can be customer-focused and can sort of um, appreciate the local cultural nuances in the way uh, they, they manifest themselves, um, uh, people will be generous and the customers will give you a shot. And once they give you a shot, you've got to do whatever it takes to keep them happy. It really is a, a repeat auto business, right? At the end, like, um, uh, the analogy is not lost on me where um, once you go to a grocery store, you keep going to that grocery store. People very rarely sh change grocery stores. You know, you, you establish a multi-generational relationship with your grocery store. Um, you want ketchup, you, you don't think of stores where you can find ketchup, you think of where in that store is that bottle of ketchup kept. So your, your entire sort of like brain circuitry works to like get you to that store, to that shelf. You're not hunting for stores to go to. And in many ways, we want to establish that relationship with our customers. We, the, the mode might be digital, but at the end, we're a, uh, we're a retailer, right? And 
Uh, people trust us to bring them convenience. Convenience is we should have what they want. We should have it the price that they find reasonable. And we should deliver service that is uh, uh, that, that the customer feels is better than what they can get elsewhere. And if you can deliver that package of convenience to the customer, um, they, will, they will reward you with trust and loyalty. And, and they'll come back to buy diapers once they've bought ketchup. And then they'll come and buy shoes. And then hopefully that, that sort of compounds. But yeah, that's really how we think about it. It's quite simple. It's like the mental model in my head is we are that corner bakala, that little store. And whatever that guy does to keep you going back is what we need to do as an e-commerce company. Um, and then everything else is just sort of the detail. As you say, it's like a knock-on effect. Tell us a little bit more about how you fared through the pandemic. How was that for Noon? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I talk about it a lot. Like, we were just, we were only a two-year-old company when we went into the pandemic. So, um, going into 2020, we were, on, we were live only for two years. So, we launched in the, on the 12th of December 2017. 18 was our first full year, 19 was our second year, and 20 was the pandemic. So, we really were a very young company. Um, but, you know, um, the tenacity of uh, this city and our region uh, was, was what at the end carried us. I mean, yes, what happened was the mix changed. People were not going out so much, so you were selling less electronics and, and makeup, but you were selling more staples. You had to innovate and become a grocery company overnight. You had to innovate and, and, um, and shift to almost 100% digital payments uh, overnight. Um, but you know, like, uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. Uh, that's really what happened. Uh, I'm glad we're coming out of it. Uh, but in many ways, it's been, I mean, um, it's, it's a beaten down cliche now, but um, that's accelerated the digital sort of transition, uh, particularly in this market, uh, both across retail and payments. So that's really helping us. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end, uh, the guys on the front line are the real heroes. I remember driving down Sheikh Zayed Road uh, with special permits. Um, the road shut down. And the only guys on the road were delivery vans from... Um, e-commerce companies, right, us and, and our peers. And, and we became a utility uh, at the end. You couldn't go out, so things had to come to you. And people were more patient with sort of deliveries. Um, and it was just so amazing to have had a role to play in that. So. And I suppose, yeah, that, that sort of accelerated this huge boom on, on online and, and digital disruption, of course. But that must have been quite chaotic as well. To, 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 you know, to, to supply that demand must have been, yeah, a, a lot of work. And I think, yeah, it seems you've done absolutely amazingly off the back of it, and you've done well during the pandemic. It's been uh, very interesting to watch. Uh, what advice do you have for those looking to get into this highly competitive space then? Uh, we're still students of the space, so I, I have no advice to give. I think uh, it's important to know that you don't know. Um, someone wise once told me, um, uh, three years ago, a uh, business contact. He was like, he held my hand and it said, for us, my job in our friendship is to protect you from yourself. So don't ever give advice. Um, well taken. But I think one thing that I can, I can share that we use internally at Noon quite a bit is that um, we're in such a dynamic space um, that we need, to, we need to have a healthy skepticism for, uh, for long-term planning. You know, it's a, it's a dynamic, multivariate problem where things will change. Um, it's summarized as the map is not the territory. People often sort of get stuck up on maps. Uh, this is how I want to, this is my mental model of the world, and I want to do these things. Um, but at the end, like, you know, sometimes when things are moving so quickly in the pandemic or just more generally in our space, which seems to be uh, in a rapid flux, um, you need a compass, not a map to have the humility to actually toss the map that you think is exhaustive and say, I need a compass, I need to head north, um, is, is quite important. And uh, you need to like, it just makes you a better person when you have that humility, right? Like you're, you're like, yeah, I, I just, I had a mental model of how this was gonna go. It's not going that way. Things have changed. So, and I think it's particularly true for e-commerce and, 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 and consumer internet because um, it's not just what you can do, it's also what your competitors will do. And, um, and, and then you very quickly lose the plot if you're, if you're going like, to sort of be uh, uh, stubborn about what your sort of first move was. What are your thoughts on collaboration? Is collaboration quite essential uh, for future, future planning and for success in general, do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, 
we're sort of deeply anchored on the, on the ideology of having distributed sort of uh, stakeholders. So uh, we're a marketplace. For example, um, um, millions of customers shop on our platform. Tens of thousands of sellers shop on our platform. You need to find a way to collaborate with all these partners to actually set it together. You really have to, um, at the end, I think, um, in our business or in e-commerce, um, you have to see yourself not as a retailer or as a store, but as a platform on which commerce can happen. So you're a marketplace, quite literally um, the, the, a melting pot of where customers come to look for things and sellers come to sell things. And if you have that mental model, you'll, you'll, be, you'll automatically be collaborative. You will not build things to solve problems, but um, be more open to facilitating trade. Um, I know this is a little dense, but like, yeah, I mean, the, the central idea that we work with is um, be an enabler, don't be the solution. And I think uh, life sorts itself out that way. Going back to this phenomenal speed of digital transformation, how are you, how are you sort of coping with that, with that speed, essentially? Uh, I think I go back to use a compass, not a map, right? Um, do an audit of your capabilities every day and see if you're relevant or not. I think I'm too old for this, actually, some days. I, I, um, you know, I, uh, late 30s now, which is completely crazy. I'm probably one of the oldest people I've known. Um, and I'm not even kidding. Um, so uh, I think being open to new ideas is important. And I think the risk is not in the known incumbents. It's in new ideas that are coming through. and. Um, so what we've done at Noon is we've institutionalized uh, what we call an engine two. So the core, our, our main business is our main business, but we also have like a Skunkworks lab where new ideas are born. We try them out small. We have a small company in Dubai called Now Now, which is a, a, a delivery service that brings you things from stores. Uh, that was born in that Skunkworks setup. We had, you know, still the team sits on a table. It's no bigger than a table. Um, and, you know, there's a small group of people innovating, trying to find new ideas that we can then use in the core. So um, if you're a ship, you need to find a motorboat to go see the, I mean, uh, so, yeah, in, in many ways, we really feel like even we are too big to actually be agile. So we, we've created a little sort of incubator type setup to go. I didn't realize here yeah, now now is under that umbrella. Yeah, that's a, that's a great app. That's brilliant. So 11 years ago when I came to Dubai, e-commerce wasn't really a thing, was it? Because people in this part of the world especially, we like to go into the stores, you like to feel things, and it's that type of sort of consumer experience. So why do you think there's been this huge shift? And do you think we're going to keep both sides of the coin here going forward? Do you think we'll maintain those experiences with e-commerce? It's a nice sort of marriage of both. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's going to be a hybrid. Uh Still, 94 out of 100 people still go to those stores. E-commerce is still like very small, right? Um, but I think as people get used to shopping online, um, certain categories will more aggressively shift to digital sort of uh, channels. Um, but the, the kind of place we live in, I know like most people over here probably understand this. Shopping is not not just um, shopping is also entertainment. So you go to a mall to have coffee and walk around. And I think that's not going away. If anything, that's probably going to accelerate as, as sort of more people come into the active economy. Um, but e-commerce brings you um, comparability, convenience. Um, so I, I do, I am bullish that e-commerce will grow um, quite aggressively, probably like faster than most other parts of the world. And um, having said that, sort of, 70%, 80% of the economy will, even in the medium term, be offline. So I think um, it's a nice marriage of what's, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain categories will over-index, certain cate categories won't. But um, we need to coexist, and which is why we are, um, during the pandemic, we launched something uh, quite unique where um, the Dubai Mall was shut down, right? Because for, for, for a while, you could not go to the mall. The mall was closed. All malls were closed. Um, we work with the retailers to bring Dubai Mall online. So um, more than, uh, I think, 100 stores went online. You could get your things from Hamleys. You could deliver it. And we're trying to, like, double down on that model and sort of uh, build a, a truly omni-channel sort of um, shopping experience for our customers where actually now now is one such experience. Now now is, is beautiful because um, 
I'm, a, I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea that, you know, you know your groceries, you know spinnies, right? And you know where that Portuguese bread is. You know that shelf. Sometimes it's a hard relationship to uh, upend because uh, you know the product, you know the retailer. Our job is to just, just bring it to you. So uh, we're very long that omnichannel route as well. So it'll be a hybrid of uh, pure online coming from warehouses, e-commerce coming from stores, and then offline sort of obviously grows and, and changes format and becomes more, uh, more engaging from an entertainment and experience perspective. So interesting. We've got just one more minute left. Um, I wanted to talk about the future of Noon. We've got a, a very interesting session coming up with uh, PB Fintech, the chairman and CEOs here. Now, he started with an e-commerce company, then that branched out into physical stores. What's the future of Noon? It, do you have that type of model? Would that, would that ever happen for Noon, do you think? Look, I mean, we're still graduating a lot of customers to e-commerce, right? Uh, and uh, sort of in, 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 in not non-metro cities, we still have to build trust. So um, there are two ways we do it. One is sort of, uh, you, you mentioned fintech, so um, more than half the transactions in e-commerce in the region still happen with cash. So a customer at best indicates they want something, then a driver carries a, a $1,500 iPhone across the country to their door, expecting the customer to be there, and then he's handed over cash, and he brings cash back. So that trust is not there, and I think, um, I think there'll be a lot of innovation in sort of like the way payments work, but also um, touch points around e-commerce sort of like creating those portals where people can come in, return things. We put a network of lockers. So I don't know if you've seen a noon locker, which is like this sort of cube device. Uh, we've got hundreds of them um, in, in cities around the region. And that's just sort of emotionally sort of settling down the customer saying there is, it's not just an app, there's a physical thing. I can go collect my things from there. I can put my returns back there. So th there are things that you, know, you need to do to build trust. Um, Right now, we're not opening stores, but we're, doing, we're working on a bunch of ideas like that. Very nice touch, I might add, by the way. Uh, sadly, that is all we have time for. A fascinating discussion. We can't thank you enough for being here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Faris Khalid, CEO of Noon. Thank you. <laughs>